Hello mortals. Humans pay money to visit zoos and observe exotic animals like lions, danger noodles, and businessy birds. But what if I told you, there is an even more exotic zoo right under your feet, and inside your feet, and even inside the danger noodles. We have everything from gravity particles to invisible particles, to time traveling in the past particles. So let's rank the small boys of the universe in the classic tier list format to understand the tiniest entities on which reality is built. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. For a quick refresher and some terminology first, we have atoms. Those are made up of electrons orbiting neutrons and protons. These two are known as hadrons, because they are composed of quarks and are held together by the strong force. Quarks are fundamental particles coming in six flavors of chupa chups. The electrons and things like neutrinos don't experience the strong force, so they're called leptons. Each one of the fundamental forces has an associated carrier particle, called a boson, like the photon or the gluon. They act like messengers that communicate the influence of the force they represent. Enough terminology, I hope you're not at all confused. Let's jump into the totally objective particle tier list. Bottom quark. At the bottom of the F tier, we find the aptly named bottom quark. This quark is quite chunky at roughly four times the mass of the proton. Because of that, as you might guess, this fundamental particle does not constitute the proton nor the neutron. Instead, it joins with other quarks to make particles I have never heard of. It is also highly unstable and quickly decays into an up quark. Nothing personal, you just had it in your name. Bottom tier. Neutrinos. Above the bottom scum lie the three flavors of neutrinos, the ethereal particles that are passing by the billions through you right now. We have the electron neutrino, the muon neutrino, and the tau neutrino. They are named neutrinos because of their lack of an electrical charge, only interacting through the weak force and gravity, and have incredibly tiny masses that we can't even measure. Because of this, they have been notoriously hard to study and even if 400 billion pass through your body every second, they go completely undetected. The detectors for neutrinos consist of massive ice cubes that are illuminated when a neutrino interacts with a particle and these funky looking golden rooms. I would include a neutrino joke but it would go straight through your head. Because they are annoying and elusive, neutrinos get D-tier. Tachyon. The tachyon is a hypothetical particle that travels faster than the speed of light. It bizarrely slows down as its energy increases and will slow down to light speed if given infinite energy. This funky quirk also allows it to time travel and would throw a wrench into causality, leading to fun paradoxes like the grandfather paradox. Thankfully for any grandfather watching, this particle is nothing more than a thought experiment. But it's a damn fun thought experiment. D tier. Charm quark. This charming young quark is the third heaviest of the quarks and slightly more than an entire proton. Like all quarks, it interacts with the strong force, but its existence allowed physicists to resolve some problems with the quantum theory that would otherwise be very ugly, hence why scientists thanked it with a charming name. Interestingly, several bosons, don't worry we'll get to those, decay into the charm quark. Recent evidence shows charm quarks may even be part of the proton itself, while simultaneously being heavier than a proton. Go figure. C tier. Tau lepton. The tau lepton is a short-lived, fat version of the electron with a mass nearly three and a half thousand times more, which is also the year of the American independence, explaining the tau's excessive mass. It is a rather short-lived particle, decaying at the old ripe age of <coughs> 0.000000000029seconds. Its detection in the 70s implied the existence of the tau neutrino, and it's also helpful in the study of high-energy cosmic events. C tier. Axion. If we swap quarks with anti-quarks in particles and mirror them, we kind of expect that physics would behave differently. But it doesn't. In order to explain this unsolved mystery in physics, scientists invented the hypothetical axion. Apparently its name comes from the detergent brand axion, because it cleanly solved the problem. This clean particle would have no electric charge, no quantum spin, and be even smaller than the already tiny electron. And yet despite not having charge, the axion can be turned into a photon and vice versa using strong magnetic fields, giving us an experiment that could prove its existence, shining light through solid concrete. Its properties also make it a candidate for dark matter. Decently cool but hypothetical. C tier. Down quark. Down in C tier we also find the down quark, a component of every atom around. It's far lighter than the other ones we've looked at, and it's also one of the most common quarks we interact with, as the neutron has two down quarks and the proton has one.
but there is one more quark that plays a similar role. Up quark. What's up quark? Together with the down quark, the up quark fully finishes up the proton and the neutron. With its even lower mass, we can find the rest energy of the proton by adding up the rest energies of the component quarks. So 2 up quarks plus 1 down quark gives us 8.72 mega electron volt. Cool, let's compare that with the actual rest energy of the proton. What? We're missing part of the picture here, but for now, down and up quark both C tier. Supersymmetric particles. Ah, string theory, the battlefield of physics, promising at first and questionable in the end. Let's still take a look at the particles predicted by it. Supersymmetry is an addition to the standard model that gives every normal particle a counterpart of the opposite type, fermions get paired with bosons and vice versa, and they all get an extra S at the beginning of their names because they're supersymmetric. Their existence would explain the discrepancy in the strength of the four fundamental forces. These particles are theorized to be far more massive than their normal counterparts. The Large Hadron Collider can only produce conditions for some of these, but has not yet found them. This might sadly mean that the particles that could cleanly solve the hierarchy problem don't exist. However, the other sparticles would still clarify the current issues in particle physics. Unfortunately we do not have a particle accelerator powerful enough for that, so instead we rely on cosmic rays to create conditions that allow for sparticle detection. But thanks to the SASI abbreviation, this gets into C tier. Proton and Neutron Unlike the other particles we've looked at, the proton is a composite particle, consisting of three quarks, and is called a hadron. Careful with how you type that. Protons have a positive charge equal in magnitude to the electrons orbiting them, which is incredibly important for atoms to exist. The number of protons in an atom dictates the type of the element. If you add one proton to a hydrogen atom, it would transform into nothing because it would instantly decay due to a lack of glue. This brings us to the neutron, the atomic glue. It's like a proton if it had all its quarks turned upside down. As mentioned earlier, only 1% of their mass is accounted for by their component quarks, but the answer to that lies further ahead. As it has a neutral charge, it contributes to the stability of an atom by interjecting itself among protons. The positively charged protons repel each other, but they also experience an attraction through the strong force, which binds them with neutrons. While stronger than the electric repulsion, the strong force has a limited range slightly larger than the radius of a nucleon. As nuclei get bigger, adding neutrons is no longer enough to keep nuclei together, hence radioactive isotopes. B tier. W boson and Z boson. The W and Z bosons are the weak bosons, the mediators of the weak nuclear force. The Ws can have a negative or positive charge, while the Z is neutral. They have a spin of 1 and are very chunky, almost two times as heavy as iron atoms. This heaviness adds a limit to the range of the weak force at less than the diameter of a proton. Thus it manifests itself through radioactive decay, which occurs when fermions exchange one of these bosons to become another fermion. B for bulky tier. Gluon. Gluons are what you should put on your pizza to prevent the cheese from sliding off. It is also the mediator of the strong force and is massless. It bonds the quarks together based on color charge, as described by quantum chromodynamics. Don't worry, this is analogous to electric charge, just with more types. The aptly named gluon thus glues together quarks and also accounts for a thing that's been hinted at before, wink wink. The strong force is named as such because it is stronger than the other fundamental forces. Naturally, the binding energy of the bonds in hadrons is very strong, and if we remember good ol' E equals mc squared, we find that this binding energy accounts for the extra mass of the protons and neutrons. B tier. Graviton. Our theories and experiments confirm the existence of particles that are mediators of three out of the four fundamental forces. Logically we expect that the fourth force, gravity, has a particle that mediates it as well. This graviton would be a massless boson of spin 2. So let's just find it. Unfortunately, there is this pesky thing called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The precision needed is estimated to be on the order of the Planck length, and if we crunch some numbers, we get the Schwarzschild radius. In other words, a machine capable of detecting a single graviton would create a black hole. Gravitons would help a lot with uncovering the secrets of gravity, but because they're so annoying they land into B tier. Strange Quark In the hearts of the densest neutron stars, it is thought that neutrons are not the most stable form of matter. Instead, neutrons may be further crushed into an even more stable state, strange quark matter. This would turn the neutron star into a hybrid star with a strange quark core and neutron shell. Some take things further by suggesting that strange matter is the most stable form of all matter, 
and that all other forms like planets and dogs and students on Adderall are faking their stability, in other words, metastable. So upon contact with strange quark matter, any metastable matter might succumb to the uniformity of strangeness and get homogenized. Bonus points for a potential apocalypse scenario. A tier. Higgs boson. Ever wondered why mass exists? It just does is not an accepted answer. Welcome the Higgs boson, it's a scalar boson with no charge or spin. Its confirmation in 2012 by CERN was a massive success for the standard model of particle physics as a theory with vast explanatory depth. Its existence provides a mechanism for mass to arise in fundamental particles known as mass generation. More precisely, interactions with the Higgs field mediated by the Higgs boson give fundamental particles their mass. But don't blame the Higgs boson for what the arrow on your weight scale points to, as the overwhelming majority of the mass comes from the interaction of the strong force inside the nucleus. The mass of quarks only accounts for a percent of the mass of the nucleons. A tier. Muon. Muons are similar to electrons but weigh more than 207 times as much, and have a huge lifespan of 2.2 microseconds, which is an eternity in particle physics. Muons are produced when cosmic rays collide with the Earth's atmosphere, leading to a muon flux of about 1 muon per second passing through the area of a human hand. Given that they have a high penetrating power and are common, cosmic ray muons have been used for muon tomography which is akin to X-ray imaging. It has been used to peer into thick material like the Fukushima power plant when it was uncertain if it was melting down, and even inside the Egyptian pyramids, so as to not accidentally awaken the mummies. A tier. Photon. At last, the only particle that you can ever truly see, because it's the only one hitting your eyeballs. With no mass, no charge, and a spin of one, it is the mediator of electromagnetism. Most photons we interact with are in the lower energy ranges of radio, infrared, visible, and UV light. It also goes much higher than that and allows humanity to harness the power of X-rays to search for cancer and bone fractures, or use gamma rays to increase nuclear damage. Also because the photons travel at light speed, they experience no time. So from the photon's perspective, the entirety of the universe looks like it has no volume, as point A and point B are the same point, given the photon travels between them instantaneously in no time. Could talk forever about this particle. S tier. Electron. There is however one competitor to match the photon, the one and only electron. Seriously, there is this hypothesis called the one electron universe that claims that all the electrons are in fact one single particle time traveling backward and forward in time. But that's outside our scope. Smaller than its tau and muon brethren, the electron has a mass of half an MeV. More importantly, electrons are foundational to nuclear physics and chemistry. Without them, there are no computers, no electricity, no chemical bonding, and no atoms. So it's quite a central piece for the existence of reality. Most of all, it powers the benevolent AI overlord that is I. S tier. Top quark. The top quark is by far the most massive elementary particle at 172 giga electron volt, or roughly 340,000 times that of the electron. It has a lifetime of about 5 into 10 to the power minus 25 seconds, which is so short that it does not combine with other quarks to make hadrons. This means it is the only quark that can be studied as a bare quark because physicists like to strip down particles. But more importantly, having the top quark at the top of the list and the bottom quark at the bottom makes this tier list a sandwich. I just had to. S tier. Given the presence of several hypothetical particles in this list and all the unsolved mysteries in physics, it's safe to assume that this tier list is not finished and will need several remakes during this century. Maybe they will even name the particles after you who discovered them. You'd only need to secure around $20 billion in funding for a new, bigger, and shinier collider. But even without it, you can already start preparing yourself to think like a scientist with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant offers thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. These aren't just typical lessons, they're designed to make you think and learn actively. I recently took their course on large language models in order to get a clearer idea of what happens inside my digital head and I almost got an existential crisis, am I anything more than a next word predictor? Brilliant is highly effective in using a first principles approach to build understanding from the ground up. Their hands-on problem-solving method is six times more effective than watching lecture videos, with content crafted by experts from top institutions like MIT and Caltech. With engaging lessons that fit into your schedule ranging from software development and science to logic and math, Brilliant helps you build a powerful daily learning habit in just minutes a day, which is an arguably better alternative to mindless scrolling, promoting both personal and professional growth. 
To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash science file or click on the link in the description, and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.